Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at Surge. So I've slightly edited this video um, from my original just to include a few more examples to hopefully clear up a few issues that some students have had. So hopefully this will help. So first of all, what is a surd? Well, a surd is a square root that cannot be reduced to a whole number. So I've got some ex uh, examples here. So if I was to do the square root of two on a calculator and press equals, I would have 1.41421 and then it would keep going. So obviously that's not a whole number. So the square root of two is a surd. Same thing with the square root of eight here. If you were to put that in a calculator, you'd have 2.8284, blah, 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 blah. So again, that's not a whole number, and therefore that's a third. However, if I was to do the square root of 9, I get 3. 3 is a whole number, so the square root of 9 is not a third. Okay, so that's the basics of what a third is. Now, there are a few rules when we are multiplying and dividing, and something slightly to be aware of when we're adding and subtracting. So let's get cracking with a few examples to um, see how we do it. So multiplying thirds is using this rule here. So if I have the square root of something times the square root of something, that is just the same as saying the square root of that number times that number. So what I mean by that is if I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, that is just the same as saying the square root of 2 times 8, which of course we know 2 times 8 is 16, and then that's it. And of course you can simplify these, Obviously, the square root of 16 is 4. Okie dokie. Next one then. So, square root of 2 times the square root of 18, that is just the same as saying the square root of 2 times 18, like so. And, of course, when you do 2 times 18, you get 36. And you can simplify that. Square root of 36, we know, is 6. This one here, square root of 3 times the square root of 5, well, that is just the same as saying the square root of 3 times 5, which, of course, we know 3 times 5 is 15, so that is just the square root of 15. I can't simplify that, so I'll just leave it in its third form, which is just root 15, and that's absolutely fine. We only simplify it like that if we can. These two here are crucial, and they will come in handy later on. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7, so basically you are doing the same number... It, um, when it's square rooted, times by itself. So if I was to do that, that would be the same as saying 7 times 7, which of course we know is 49. So that would just be the square root of 49, which of course we can simplify to 7. So why is that key? When it comes to expanding brackets, which we'll look at later, you will be doing some of these when you times them by itself. So you've got the root of something times by the root of itself, it just gives you the whole number. Essentially, you are just getting rid of that square root. So that's just one to bear in mind. Uh, similar thing here. Even if they're negative, obviously a negative times a negative. We're still going to use our negative um, rules there. So if you do a negative times a negative, you're going to get a positive uh, result or positive answer. So essentially, that is just going to be the same as saying 3 times 3, which of course is root 9, and again, that'll get back to 3. So they're both root 3, which is why we just get rid of the square root of this 3. And even if there's two negatives, a negative times a negative gives us a positive answer. Of course, if just one of those was negative, this would be a minus. Okay? And that's multiplying. Quite simple. Exactly the same idea when it comes to dividing. If you have the square root of a number divided by the square root of the number, that is the same as saying the square root of the top number divided by the other number. So let's have a go at this one then. So root 8 divided by root 2, that is just the same as saying the square root of 8 divided by 2. And of course, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so that is just going to be the square root of 4, which we can simplify to be 2. This one here, the square root of 27 divided by the square root of 3, that is just the same as saying the square root of 27 divided by 3, which of course we know that would just be 9, so that just goes to the root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And last but not least for this one, that is uh, root 15 divided by the root 5 is just the square root of 15 divided by 5, which of course uh, would just give us the square root of 3. Okay, so that's multiplying and dividing. 
kind of makes sense. Unfortunately, with adding and subtracting, it doesn't really make sense and there's actually no rule. And I'll prove why now. If we were to take the same sort of logic we took with these ones, where we have the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16, and we just add them together underneath the square root, 9 adds 16 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So you'd think the answer was 5. However, the square root of 9 we definitely know is 3. The square root of 16 we definitely know is 4. So therefore, 3 add 4 is 7. So the actual answer is 7. However, using the same logic for multiplying and dividing, we get 5. So there's actually no rule for adding and subtracting thirds. With the slight exception, if you have the same third, so for example here I have root 6 and root 6, when they are the same, you can add them. So for example, if I have 2 root 6 here, plus 3 root 6 here, I could just add the 2 and the 3 to say, well, that's the same as saying 5 root 6. But I can only do that because they are both root 6s. Same thing for subtracting. They're both root 11, in which case I can simplify them. And then 5, take away 2 is 3, and obviously then root 11. But that's only because they're the same. You can't do it if they're different like I did up there. So they're the basic rules of thirds. Let's start delving into some questions. So one of the most common questions you'll have are something like these first ones I've got here. And these are the two that I've added in. But let's have a look at this one first. It says write the square root of 48 in the form k, and usually k will just be a whole number or an integer or something like that, root 3. So this one gives you a little bit of a clue with this root 3. So what you need to do is you say, right, I've got the square root of 48, and I need to rewrite it. So that's going to equal, and I'm going to use my multiplying rule to break that up. So I'm going to say, what two numbers multiply to get 48? But don't just pick any two numbers. Think about your square root numbers, because they're the ones that you are going to be able to square root to get a whole number. But even better than that, this gives us a clue. By saying it needs to be in this form, a whole number root 3, I know there's going to be a 3 there. In which case, what do I times by 3 to get to 48? And hopefully you can see that would be 16, which we know is a square number. And that must be a square number because then we can start to go uh, simplify it. We can break this up. So the square root of 16 times 3 is the same as saying the square root of 16 times by the square root of 3. So that's using our multiplying rule, but just backwards. Instead of doing this to get that, I've got that and gone backwards. And then we can say, OK, well, the square root of 16 is 4. Obviously, root 3 can't be uh, simplified or anything, so it just stays the same. And therefore, the answer would be 4 root 3. 3, which is in the form there, and of course that just means that k is 4, because that's what the number in front of the root 3 there. Okay, so we're using the multiplying rule, but just backwards, and we're making sure that we get a square number here. But that gave us a bit of a clue with the 3, so these are the two that I've added. What happens if you don't have the clue there? How do you simplify this third? Well, quite simply, we do a very similar sort of thing and you must know your square numbers. So we start off with the square root of 63. I'm just going to write down some of my square numbers here. So I've got 1, uh, squared is obviously 1, 2 squared is 4, uh, 3 squared is 9. Now I know that 63 is in the 9 times table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that and say, OK, 9 times what gets me 63? Well, that's 7 in which case I can now break this up to be root 9 times root 7. And obviously the square root of 9 is 3 times root 7. Can't do nothing with root 7, that just stays the same, which of course gets me the answer of 3 root 7. So that's how you can simplify a third if you haven't been given a clue. Write down your square numbers and just see which one will go into that number that you have inside the square root. 
This one here is slightly different and I'm going to deliberately go the long way around to show you how to spot if you've done something similar. So, square root of 80 and again you're going to go through your square numbers but hopefully quite quickly you'll see, ah, 4 goes into 80. So 4 times what gets me 80? Well that's going to be 20. And again, we can break it up in the same way we were doing up here. So that's just the same as saying the square root of 4 times the square root of 20. Square root of 4 is 2 times root 20, which of course just gives me 2 root 20. And people will leave it like that and say, OK, I've simplified it. Well, you've half done it. You've half simplified it. Because if we were to take root 20, we can actually put another square number in there. So if I was to do 2 root 20, what does that actually equal? Well, that's 2 times the square root. And if you notice here, 4 will also go into 20. So you can actually break up root 20 again by saying that's 4 times 5. So that's 2 times root 4 times root 5. And then 2 times, well, root 4 is just 2. So I'm going to change that to a 2 root 5 and then we get the answer we just do 2 times 2 which is 4 times by root 5 so we get 4 root 5 so if you catch the wrong one well not the wrong one so to speak but you might just need to double check have you actually fully simplified it and not just simplified it the quick way is to go okay the square root of 80 is the same and you keep going with your square numbers and you try and find the highest one that goes into it, in which case in uh, here we've got 16 will actually go into it. I do 16 times 5, so 16 is a square number, and then I can do the square root of 16 times by the square root of 5, and then there's 4 times root 5, and as you can see you get to the same answer. Obviously this one we go straight there because we've picked the highest square number that goes into it. Here we didn't, but we could have carried on going because we would have spotted that a square number does go into 20. Both ways are absolutely fine. Both ways will get you the right answer. It's just obviously this way, just make sure you keep going and double check that you have simplified it as fully as you possibly can. Okie dokie, so let's have a look at expanding some brackets then. So I'm going to use my grid to expand the bracket, no different to if I was expanding double brackets normally. And I'm going to have root 3 minus root 2. And I'm going to have root 3 there plus root 2. So this is where your multiplying um, surs comes in handy again. And if you remember, I said if you have the square root of something and you times it by itself, you just remove the square root. So that's just going to give me 3. And then root 3 times minus root 2 well, 3 times 2 is 6, so that's going to give me minus root 6, because it's a minus times a plus, so my answer is going to be a negative, and then 3 times 2 is 6. Um, root 2 times root 3, well, that 2 times 3 is 6, so that's just the same as saying root 6. This is, again, just using that multiplying rule. And again, root 2 times root 2, so that's just going to uh, get rid of the square root, so that's going to be 2. However, that one's a negative, this one's a positive, which means my answer will be a negative. Once you've done that, just write it out as you would do normally, like so. Minus root 6 plus root 6, because these are both the same, same third, root 6 and root 6, I can simplify them, and one's negative and one's positive, so if I minus 1 and add 1, they actually cancel out to be nothing, but I can do that because they are the same. And then 3 take away 2 is just 1. So your answer for this expansion is just 1. Don't worry, I'm going to do some uh, slightly different ones on my next page, which is this one here. So here we go again. I've got to expand this, and I need to leave it in this form. But don't worry too much about this. Let's just expand it and see what we're left with. So... 5 minus root 3. Remember, if it's squared, you times it by itself. So I'm just going to have 5 minus root 3 down that side as well. 5 times 5 is 25. No different to how we would do it normally. 5 times minus root 3 is just minus 5 
root 3. 5 times minus root 3 is obviously the same, so minus 5 root 3. And then root 3 times root 3, remember, if they're the same, it just removes the square root for a 3. And a negative times a negative is a positive, just like we talked about on the very first page we did. Write this out, see what we've got. So I've got my 25, I've got my minus 5 root 3, I've got another 5, minus 5 root 3, and I have plus 3. So when I simplify this, 25 plus 3 is 28, and then minus 5 root 3, minus 5 root 3, because they're both root 3s, I can simplify them, it's not a problem. Minus 5, take away another 5, is minus 10, and of course root 3. And you're done. And the last one I've included this one, because this always trips people up, Right, square root of 80 plus the square root of 180 in the form p root 5. Okay, so take this step by step. Simplify root 80, simplify root 180, see what you're left with, and obviously we're aiming to get that root 5. Now, I've already done the square root of 80. We did that on the previous page. So have a look back there if you can't remember how to do it. But we said that was 4 root 5, which is handy, because I have map root 5. So say that was one I did previously. And then we've got this new one here, root 180. OK, again, we're given this clue. It needs to be root 5. So I'm going to have my 5. But what do I times by 5 to get to 180? I'm hoping it's a square number, and it is. It's 36. Then you can break it down. So square root of 36 times 5 is just the same as saying the square root of 36 times the square root of 5. Square root of 36 is 6, and obviously then I still need to times it by my root 5, and then that's just 6 root 5. So again, root 5. Again, when we did that one on the previous bit, it was root 5. So now when I put it all together, which is here, so I've got my 4 root 5, which was my root 80, plus my 6 root 5, which was my root 180. And because they are both the same, sir, because they are both root 5, I can add these together. So 4 add 6 is 10, and then, of course, the third was root 5. So it's 10 root 5 as the final answer. So hopefully those few little extra examples in there make um, thirds a bit more easier to understand how to go about them. Essentially, you're just looking for your square numbers um, inside the third just to try and simplify it. So have a go at some questions, see how you get on. Hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.